Good afternoon. My name is Norman Patterson, and I'm a Christian evangelist. An evangelist is somebody that brings good news. That's what the word evangelical means, somebody that would bring the good news. And I'm here to bring the good news of Jesus Christ. But before you share good news, there has to be an understanding of what the bad news is. The bad news is that we're all under the wrath of God, that God is a holy God. I mean, that's a good thing that God is holy, 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 and that God is just. Those are good things, but for us it makes it very difficult because God is holy and we are not. God is light and we are in darkness. And so before I can bring you the good news, I have to bring you the bad news is that before a holy God we all have sinned. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. <coughs> All us human beings have sinned before God, and sin is defined by the Bible as the transgression or want of conformity unto the law of God. So every human being that has ever lived aside from Jesus Christ has broken the law of God. And so therefore we've sinned before God, and the law of God is very clear. It's in the Ten Commandments that ultimately speaking we have what the law of God is. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. You see, there's not many gods. There's only one God. And the God, the one and only true, holy, self-existing God has revealed himself in the pages of his Bible. You see, the Bible is a unique book because it is the word of God, ultimately speaking. The Bible reveals to us, what do you think, sir? You don't think it's murder? No, not really. No, you really don't? Is it a human life? Yeah. Okay, so if it's a human life and we kill it, then it's murder, right? Does that definition apply to before or after it leaves? What does it matter? I think it does. In what way? Hawaii. Why? One, it's a woman's body, and as a man doesn't have a pair of ovaries in my body, right? Yeah. I have no right to tell a woman what she does and does not want to do with it. I agree. I, I agree. What about the body inside of her body? It, tough, it kind of sucks to suck in that case. Like, wait, wait, wait. So you, let me understand you. It sucks for that baby? Do you, I mean, we're back in slave days and there were slave masters, right? Would you say, well, it sucks for the slaves because the slave masters, it's their slave, their plantation, therefore their choice? Well, no, I wouldn't say that because there's a difference between a woman choosing to get an abortion and the oppression of an entire people. Yep. I think you're, 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 committed, you're comparing mountains to molehills with this. Not at all. No, because we're talking about in slavery times, they did not believe that the slaves are human beings and we don't believe that babies that's are human trying, beings. That's, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to figure out here. Figure it out because they didn't believe slaves were human beings. And we don't believe that babies in the womb are human beings. It's the same logic. It wasn't a human, it wasn't a human. Wait, so you, you admit that that baby in the womb is a human being? I admit it's a human. So we could kill it? Based yeah. on what? I mean, it sucks to suck, like I said. So would you have said that to the slaves in slave okay, days? Let me ask you this. Yes. Let me ask you this. Would you rather that baby suffer a terrible childhood how do you know because, how do you know it's going to have a terrible childhood who are you because a lot of these times when women get abortions they don't do yes sometimes they do it out of their own self-interest but a lot of these times sometimes women just aren't equipped to be good mothers okay so that we got a one-year-old baby would you rather traumatize your would you rather eventually inevitably traumatize your child Mur wait we'll murder it first well, not, that's your not solution Okay. A lot of people who believe what you believe in, they also say adoption is the right the Absolutely. great uh, alternative. But yep. the adoption the adoption system in the hell in the DCF the foster care system in America for decades now has been shit and been woefully under God bless you, ma'am. Right, let me ask you this. You you got to talk. So my question to you 
is this? Do right. you want to kill these kids outright, or do you want these kids to suffer for it? How do you know that? First of all, or not only that, hold on, let me talk. All right, you, you ask me a question. They end up in jail, they end up drug addicts, they end up dead at young ages. These are real statistics. I can go Google. Be, be, wait, wait, wait. So kids, kids, go, go, ask the question. And then let me answer. Would you rather these kids have, would you rather these kids not get here in the first place and not be born and not just have to go through all that and not make the problems already have work? Okay. Or would you rather burden the fucking DCS system with a kid that somebody wasn't prepared for? First of all, okay, let me answer your question. First of all, 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 life, all life is made in the image of God, so you don't have, and the state does not have the determination of what is a human being and what is not. Second of all, you don't know whether they're going to suffer, and there are children right now that are outside of the womb suffering. Would you recommend that we kill them? No. Why not? Because they're already here. So, they're, no, the, the, when there, there's a baby that's already in the womb, it's already here. It's already here. Right, it's inside the woman. It's a body inside of the woman's body, right? It's a body inside of the body. That's what they said in slave days. Did you know that? I mean, look at this sign here. Equal rights for all humans. E equal rights for all humans. So, so the abolitionists, which I'm an abolitionist back in slavery days, they said slavery was wrong. Because they use the same arguments that you, you're using. All these people, they're better off, if they're in slavery, whatever, they're not human beings. So these are human beings in the image of God. Okay, but again, racial bigotry and abortion. It's just, it's just, entire people oh, it's a, 65 million babies have been aborted. That's an oppression on the entire bunch of people based on their size. So back then, but back then, they did it. They did it based. Hey, listen. They did it. I'm not even American. Okay. So you just think they should be slaughtered? You think they're human beings? No, no, no. Killed, murdered, murdered, murdered. They're human life. So the taking of a human life is murder. What is your alternative? What is the alternative solution? If not having the baby, giving them life. We don't have a right to go kill other human beings. What if that woman isn't able? Well, we don't know that. You don't but know that. that wait, wait, are you saying you don't that that's that. not the reality that happens? We, I'm saying, saying that, that you that don't... Doesn't happen, that people okay, wait. Have you, kids let me answer the question. To raise? No, I'm asking. Are you okay, saying that that let me answer. Happen? Are you saying that that's not a likely eventuality? Oh, babies get abused in, in all kinds of homes from we're affluent people. No, we're, no, we're talking about, about anybody. People. So you're saying babies who all babies who are aborted... Let, let me answer. You've talked. I'm asking you. Okay, then let me answer. The alternative is give them life. You don't have a right to take the life of another what human being. Next? What then you take what, care of them and raise what, what, them. What if you are not fit, not so let's kill all the kids. But what give them up for adoption. Give them up for adoption. But then what I just explained to you, the adoption system isn't a, Oh, there's there's people all the time. There's no people pay for your own people pay for their own adoption. So wait, your argument is that we should kill kids because they're going to suffer. That's your argument. argument wait, no, you said we should kill kids. We should kill them because we're going to suffer. Abortion is the way. What is the alternative? And you're to have life. To the adoption, but then what next is my question. Take care of them. But what if you aren't able to? These so wait, okay, so if they're, they're, they're not able to, do we kill them? Why kill them? But why kill them? But why kill them? See, but what, you're, what you have, what you have is a relativistic view of humanity. What's that? Oh, well, probably well over 100 million babies. 100 million babies. So we kill them. People who are getting an abortion, people who are getting an abortion does not necessarily mean we take care of them, just like we deal with every kid. Oh, you get a job, you, you feed them, you feed them, so you would rather kill them. See, but, see, your alternative is to slaughter them. 
But your alternative is to kill them. Yes, but what but is so but your your solution your solution is to kill them. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Here, are you here? You're here. I'm here. We had moms and dads, or moms or dads. Yeah, but not all babies get aborted. They're they're born into homes. So we don't have a right. We don't have a right just to kill babies. We don't have a right just to kill babies. So why not kill them? Why? On what basis? Let me ask you a question. No, no. Let me ask you a question. No, you won't let me answer the question. You keep talking. All right. Ask the. Listen, sir. Ask a question and I'll answer. Okay. Hundred million, million, not billion. Now, I'm not, now listen, you're saying that abortion is murder. My question is, what is the alternative? Because you say You said wait, you say first let's clarify. You said abortion was murder. You said abortion was murder. You No no, I said are they human it's life? On your side. Yeah, That's but you, you Okay, feel. but you That's said you, you said but they're human life. Abortion Sir, is murder. Did you say they're human I'm life? Not saying it's not, you said I'm not wait. Are they human life? Sure. Uh, uh, question. Okay, so it is murder. Sure, let's say it's murder. Okay, your, so well, he says story? that abortion is murder okay. and that it's okay. You say abortion is murder, but it's okay to murder them. I'm saying abortion. If you believe abortion is murder... You believe abortion is murder. It's on your thing. Yeah, but well, I believe it's murder, absolutely. Your, but so that, do you. When that child gets here, that child has to be provided for Take care of them. Take it's care of easy them. to say that, but it's not always so. So why would we practical. kill them? Because would you rather have a kid? Would you rather not have the kid in the first place? There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee they're going to be killed. But you see, there's no and guarantee. As a matter of fact, I lost my baby, right? So I'm so so I'm really just. How did you, how did you lose your baby? My baby was still born. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Yep. You're saying raise them. You're saying do all these yep. things. And I'm not saying that those aren't things people should do. In a pretty world, then yes, of course. But people get abortions because they aren't able no, to. No, people do get things. abortions because they're selfish murderers. People get abortions because they're selfish down. murderers. And maybe that, and that might be true. But you also cannot ignore the fact that people get abortions because they're not equipped to take care Doesn't of them. Doesn't matter. Then they give them up for adoption. I'm not talking about adoption, adoption and the DCF systems are two different systems. They're two different systems. There are all kinds of people that... What's going to happen to these kids? We raise them. We raise them. So what about the babies? What's that? Sure, you give me a baby, I'll raise it. Absolutely, 100%. Absolutely. So then give them up for adoption. Oh, but there's, for every every baby that's born, there's all kinds of couples that want to adopt. The adoption system's wide open. For every couple, for every person that is willing and able, there are a hundred more people who can't. No, there's all kinds of people that want to adopt. Absolutely they are. You feel me? They are. Listen, here's my thing. Like I said, the people, the reason people have these abortions in the first place is because they are physically... Wait, no, let's, the reason people murder their babies... Let's let's use real terminology. The reason people murder their babies is so. What if he's a so? What, okay, we got a kid that's one years old. The mother can't take care of him. Should he kill it? Wait, should they kill the baby? Why not? Why not? Wait, so what? That little baby is alive inside of the womb. So why should you kill it? The, where, wait, where is the baby? What, what does here mean? Here means out of the womb. It's one thing. So a baby that's in the womb is not a human being? It's one thing for me to walk up to a one-year-old and cap the fucking head. 
Why? Right for the embedded difference. Why? There's a difference between that and eight and a woman going to have an abortion and making this. What's the difference? Is it a human being in the womb? Yes. Okay. It's a human being in the womb and it's a human being out of the womb. So, wait. It's a human being in the womb and a human being out of the womb. Okay. So, the location. So, that's a, you're saying that the location is the reason a person should murder a baby. What I'm saying is that abortion is wrong and while it might be the case, it has been really and truly. What is, there's, what is the solution? Because clearly, the solutions we have don't exist because abortion is still in practice. No, no, that's no, not no, why no, people have been... No, that's, not, have that's a faulty argument. Work. That's not an but argument. That's a wrong argument. Abortion is not here and because people can't take care of their babies. We have abortion sure, because exists, people... But if DCF was really as effective as you're claiming it is... I'm not claiming DCF is effective so at all. I never said. I did not admit that. I did not admit that. I did not admit that. Hold on, no. I did not. I did not. Look at. I did not admit that DCF. I never said DCF. No. I never said it. I, I never said DCF. I never said DCF is effective. I'm saying, my yeah. argument is that they're human life and as human and beings, that they should live. And that, Justin, you already said, abortion is murder. So abortion is murder. So you believe, you said, what is the solution? Raise the kid, raise the kid. No, that's not true. No, they have them, they abort their babies because they're murderers. Absolutely it does. That's not how these things work. Wait, so so people you're, you're saying you're let me ask you this right? question. Yeah, sure, go ahead. So you're saying there are instances where one human being can murder another human being. Shit, if you gave me a reason, I'm popping cat your ass right now. What's that? If you gave me a reason, I'm popping cat. Well, I disagree right with you. You know if something, sir? If you I need to repent like of I your sin. To. You're, si you're a sinner like that I needs need to, to, you need to repent of your sin because you are, you are a man that, you are a man that needs to repent of your sin because you believe that we should murder babies. You, we, you believe that people should murder their babies. I believe people should be able to make the decision to murder another human being. See, no wonder you would say, threaten me. You just threatened that you would kill me, right? So you have, you have a view of humanity. Hey, sir, sir, you said that we could murder babies, and you said you want to murder me. I never said I wanted to. You said, you said, you said, you said you'll cap my ass. I have it on video. I have it on video. So let's pull up the video and see what I said. We can. We can I don't do want it to. We can do it right now. Okay. We can do it right now. All right, that's we can fine. Do it right now. Let's do but it right now. But you said that we Let's can murder, right Let's run murder the video human back. beings. Let's run the video back and see what I said. No, I don't want Let's to. Let's run the video. No, let's run the video. I don't want back to. And see what I said. So what let's you said, what you did I said. say, babies you in the said, womb I are said, human you beings. Said that I came out. Listen, you know what, now, sir? If I now if you play that video, you know what, sir? I didn't say that I want. You are a sinner that needs to repent of your sin. What did you say about capping me? What, what did let's, you tell me? What you said? No, no. Let me. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. What did you say? So let's play the video. Defamation. Let's see what I said. You don't even know what defamation let's see what I said. is. So, sir, you need to repent of your sin. Dude, I need to repent of my sin. Why? Because you're a sinner before God. Absolutely, you have broken God's law, and you're going to go to hell if you don't where repent. The, where, where in God's law does it say that? Can you always play? It says. It Wait, says, no, thou where? shalt I not know. murder. Thou where? shalt not murder. What but does that where mean? Does it say that abortion is wrong? It says, thou shalt. Wait, murder, abortion murder. is murder, sir. Yes or no? Oh, Wait, you already said, you said abortion was murder. Oh, now you want to pull up the tape. No, let's come see, on. Let's you, see if I said what I said, though. Did, did said, is abortion said, murder? Said, said, yes though. or no? No. I really oh, wait, don't okay, so abortion is not murder. I don't think it is. Honestly. Okay, but you did. You, you think abortion are is murder. You, are our babies in the womb? Let me, murder, this, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I'll argue for a few more minutes. Let me ask you this. Is murder for the sake of your argument? Okay. Let's say it is. Okay. If it is. Abortion is murder. It is. Right. Yep. What is your because 
like I said, what the things you're saying yep. clearly don't happen in practice. Of course because they do. Abor people still get abortion. So with that being no, said, people get abortion because there's murderers. Wait, with that being said, what is your magical solution? There's no magical solution. God will right, provide. What is your end all be all to this? What do this end to end abortion. I'm an abolitionist. But then what next? Then we have babies. We don't have a right just to kill human beings. No, no, I, I, I told you. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not murder. Let me ask you, sir. Sir, let me ask you. Uh, you know, what next? And that's what your argument What basis are that? Of course the adoption system works. No, it doesn't. Of course it does. I can show you the statistics. Go ahead, go ahead. I can show you the statistics. All right. While you're looking that up, I'm going to keep preaching. That, that adoption doesn't work. What does adoption doesn't work mean? You don't know what you're talking about. I know, look up the statistics. Look up the, I'm not talking about DCF. I'm talking about adoption. I'm talking about, I'm talking about adoption. Okay, go, look it up. Look it up. Look it up. No, DCF, I'm not talking about DCF. No, there's adoption agencies. There are adoption agencies, sir. Yeah, so it's a DCF. DCF is a flawed system. I am not now. DCF cannot. Right, sir? So you believe that people should be murdered. Okay, you won't answer my question. Let me ask you a question. Okay, I've had enough. I've had enough. You you can't even have. Okay. So what I'm talking about here is that over 65 million babies are murdered in the United States since 1973. And that statistic is even higher when you factor in the fact that women can take a pill to poison the baby inside of them. The word of God is very clear. Thou shalt not murder. And murder is talking about the taking of a human life. And we know that little babies in the womb from the moment of conception until they die, even beyond that, are human beings. So we do not have the right to take the life of other human beings. And anybody who takes the life of a human being has murdered a human being. And that's why my sign says, abortion is murder. You see, murder is defined by the taking of an innocent life. According to the law of God, we do not have the right to take another human being's life. But the sign also says that forgiveness for murder can be found in Jesus Christ. So even if you have committed murder through a, a, abortion, there is still forgiveness for us through the gospel of Jesus Christ. That we could be forgiven of our sin. It doesn't matter what the sin is. It could be the sin of adultery. It could be the sin of bearing false witness. It certainly is the sin of pride that we have. You see, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means we all need to come to Christ. Take care, sir. I hope you come to Christ. Because only in Jesus Christ, only through the blood of Christ, is there forgiveness of sin. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, for all have sinned. There's not a person besides Jesus Christ that has not broken the law of God. And so we all stand as guilty sinners before a holy God. But see, God, the, as John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. There's the message of the gospel right there. Whosoever believes in the only begotten Son of God will have forgiveness from God. That through the blood of Jesus Christ, who is fully God and fully man, our sins can and will be forgiven by God the Father. It doesn't matter who we are, where we come from. It doesn't matter what country we come from. It doesn't matter what language we speak. The gospel of Jesus Christ is for all nations. It's for all people. Because we are all human beings. 
be it a, a baby that has just been conceived that's a one, a single celled um, creature, a zygote, or whether it's a person who's old, whether it's a person who's mentally handicapped, whether it doesn't matter, all human beings, all human beings are created in the image of God. And all human beings can turn to Jesus Christ for forgiveness of sins. Doesn't matter what the sin you've ever committed, God has made, God has made a way for us to have our sins forgiven. And that's why we have the law of God. The law of God tells us about the righteous standard of who God is and what he has given us in the revelation of who he is and in his holiness. And so the law of God says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. There's only one God. There's only one true God, and that God is the one that has revealed himself in the pages of the Bible. This God has said, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. So like in the Catholic Church, they have all kinds of gra graven images. God says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. And many cultures have statues that they bow down to. And God says, thou shalt not make any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a zealous God, a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. And the third commandment is, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. If you have used the name of Jesus Christ as a swear word, as a curse word, if you've said, God damn it, or something like that, in your anger and frustration, you've taken the name of God in vain. And God will not hold you guiltless that takes his name in vain. And the fourth commandment says, Thou shalt remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. We all have violated the Lord's day, which is the Christian Sabbath. And the fifth commandment says, Honor thy father and thy mother. How many of us have broken God's law by dishonoring our fathers and our mothers and the godly authority that God has ordained to keep peace and to raise us as we are supposed to be raised? And the sixth commandment is, Thou shalt not murder, in which abortion is one of those ways that we commit abortion in our society. We commit murder in our society. And so we as a society have broken God's law and we have legally sanctioned the reality that people now can take the lives of a little innocent baby inside of the womb and be legally protected here in the state of Connecticut in doing so. And the seventh commandment is actually related to abortion. The seventh commandment is, thou shalt not commit adultery. In other words, we shall not sexually sin before God because the law of God says that the only sexual union that is beautiful in his eye and is allowed in his eyes is the sexual union between one man and one woman in the holy estate of matrimony. Any sexuality outside of God's covenant law is breaking the seventh commandment. And far too often, little babies are conceived through fornication, through adultery, through rape, through um, all kinds of horrible, terrible sins. And so the breaking of God's law and the sexual sins pours over into the reality that we have in our land of the abortion of millions upon millions upon millions of little babies. And the Eighth Commandment is, Thou shalt not steal. We don't have a right to take other people's property. And how many of us have stolen in many ways? And the Ninth Commandment, Thou shalt not bear false witness. How many of us have lied? How many of us have deceived other people? Thou shalt not bear false witness is one of God's laws that we've broken. And then finally, the last commandment is, thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. 
thou shalt not covet anything that is thy neighbor's. And so we have all have broken the law of God. And because we've broken the law of God, we need the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, because God has not left us in our sin, God has not left us in our sin. God has provided a way for us to have forgiveness in Jesus Christ. You see, the one and only true holy God has given His only begotten Son. You see, the Jehovah Witnesses are about out and about today and they preach a false gospel. They do not believe that Jesus Christ was God. They believe that Jesus was some sort of angel. But the Bible clearly teaches that Jesus Christ was the second person of the Holy Trinity, fully God and fully man. And when Jesus went to the cross, he, he went as an innocent man, fully representing all mankind. And when Jesus Christ hung upon the cross, the wrath of God towards sin was poured upon, uh, out upon him. And the reason why that's important is that when God the Father punished Jesus Christ, God the Son, on behalf of sinners, all those who believe in Jesus Christ, all those who put their faith in Jesus Christ can and will have their sins forgiven because of what Christ has done. Because Jesus Christ took the punishment that sin deserves upon himself upon the cross. And so the wrath of God, the justice of God was satisfied by the death of innocent Jesus who was fully God and fully man. And that's what it means in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. And he hath made him to be sin who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. You see, Jesus Christ took upon him the wrath of God, the sin of all those who would trust in him and believe in him. And if you put your hope and your trust in Jesus Christ this day, if you put your hope and your trust in Christ this day, I tell you, God the Father will forgive you on behalf of God the Son. God the Holy Spirit will apply the blood of Jesus Christ to your account. He will apply the death of Jesus Christ to your account. And he will... Uh, hey, do you have anything more intelligent than, than that? That's not an argument, sir. That's not an argument. It, yeah, that's not an argument either. So obviously you're not an intelligent man just to call names. That's an ad hominem argument, sir. At least have an argument. Have present your case rather than calling names. Yeah, to call somebody names and to swear at them is not an argument. And I'm willing to have a reasonable conversation with anybody who would like to engage in it. I have a bachelor's degree in philosophy, so I can argue. I can understand logic and reasoning. I have a Master of Divinity degree from Asbury Seminary, so I can tell you what I think that the Bible says. And that's why I'm out here. I'm out here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to present to you the way of salvation. You see, there's only one way of salvation. And that way of salvation is found in the person and work of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God and the Son of Man. The love of God has been manifested to us. The love of God has been given to us in Jesus Christ so that all who believe in Christ, all who believe in Jesus Christ can have their sins forgiven. God will wash away your sin. God will forgive your sin based upon who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for us upon the cross. Be it the sin of abortion, be it the sin of lust, be it the sin of blasphemy, be it the sin of lying, be it the sin of disobedience and rebellion, all those sins are sins that Jesus Christ has died for. Those are sins that God himself can and will forgive us for based upon the person and work of Jesus Christ. And so I'm calling upon you today to give your life to Christ, to trust in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation. He could forgive the sin of abortion as this sign says. He can forgive the sin of adultery. He can forgive the sin of, of lying. 
and stealing and cheating. He could forgive the sin of blasphemy. All the sins that all human beings have ever committed can be forgiven by the blood, by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So come to Christ this day. <coughs> Listen to the invitation. There's no need to die. There's no need to go to hell. There's no need to be separated by God and from God for all eternity. You can be made right with the one and only true holy Trinitarian God who has revealed himself in the Bible through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what I'm out here preaching and teaching. That all who call upon the name of the Lord, all who trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, all who put their hope and their faith in the person and work of Jesus Christ can and will be saved by God. Saved from what? Saved from His wrath. Saved from His justice so that justice is served because Jesus Christ died upon the cross so that the justice of God was satisfied by God, by Jesus Christ upon the cross. That all who trust in Him, all who put their faith in Him, can be forgiven by God by the means by which God has provided. And so I highlight the sin of abortion, but sin of abortion is not the only sin that we have committed in humanity. We've committed all kinds of sin. You see, the Bible, Jesus even says that if you say you hate your brother, you have committed murder with them in your heart. And that's why we need God's forgiveness. Jesus said that if you even look at a woman in lust, you have committed adultery in your heart. But that sin can be forgiven if you put your hope and your faith in Jesus. Because only in Christ, only in Jesus Christ can your sin be taken away. Only in Jesus Christ. Do you agree with this, sir? What's that? Why would you murder a baby because a woman's been raped? Why would you execute that child because of the sin of a man? Yeah, but it, what's that? What's not? Why kill the baby because a man committed sin on a woman's body? Why would you do that, sir? That's a ridiculous argument. Why execute the child? The rapist should be executed, I agree, but that baby should not be executed. It's a poor argument, sir. It's a very poor argument that you just made. His argument is that if a baby is conceived in rape, that the baby should be slaughtered, that the baby should be killed. And that's a fallacious argument. Why would you kill an innocent baby because of the sin of a wicked and horrible and sinful man. If a man rapes a woman, he should be, according to the law of God, executed because he is a guilty, wicked, horrible man. But that little baby, that little baby should not be executed because of the sin of another human being. Two wrongs do not make a right. The raping of a woman is a wicked and horrible and terrible sin. But then that sin is even exacerbated when you kill the life of that innocent baby for, for the sins of a man. That's why we need to hear the message of the gospel. That's why we need to hear the message that God has made a way for us to have our sins forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's why the sign says abortion is murder. Abortion is murder. Forgiveness for murder can be found in Jesus Christ alone. Forgiveness for rape can be found in Jesus Christ alone. Forgiveness Forgiveness for adultery can be found in Jesus Christ alone. You see the sign, it only talks about the murder of abortion. But forgiveness for lust can be forgiven 
in Jesus Christ alone. Forgiveness for bearing false witness can be forgiven in Jesus Christ alone. Forgiveness for blasphemy against God can be forgiven in Jesus Christ alone. Forgiveness for hatred can be found in Jesus Christ alone. You see, there's only one way that God has provided for us to have our sins forgiven, and that is through the person and work of Jesus Christ. And finally, the last thing I want to say is that I'm a Christian abolitionist. I'm a Christian abolitionist. Remember the abolitionists of old? The abolitionists of old said that slavery was a sin before God and it must end. And one of the reasons that slavery ended is because abolitionists stood against the wickedness of slavery. And so I am an abortion abolitionist, which means that I'm calling for, here in the state of Connecticut, and in the United States of America, and all throughout the world, the end of murdering innocent little babies in the womb. That, that laws that protect murderers, that protect people to murder their babies, needs to be abolished. And these little babies need to be protected by the full weight of the law, by the full weight of the law, so that their little lives can be protected by law. You see, here in Connecticut, they do not represent little babies. They do not care about little babies. In fact, the state of Connecticut just passed something where over $3 million is going to be given to planned murderhood. $3 million is going to be given for child sacrifice here in Connecticut. Federal money which was, I think, stolen from the American people. And now it's distributed to Con Connecticut. And the House of Representatives here in the state of Connecticut, and the Senate here in the state of Connecticut, and the governor over the state of Connecticut endorsed a measure where part of this measure is that $3 million Three million dollars will be spent on the child sacrifice of aborting little innocent babies in the state of Connecticut. And so the blood of these little innocent babies is on our hands. The blood of all the innocent babies that have been murdered in the state of Connecticut is on our hands and we need to repent of our sin and the sin of abortion and abortion must be abolished now. Thank you for listening, and I hope and pray that you come to the knowledge of the Savior, Jesus Christ, that you will know that there's forgiveness only for all our sins, only through the blood of Jesus Christ. There's no other way. There's no other way.